I'm in Maryland. It's a very blue state. Being a Donald Trump fan, um, let's just say you get into a lot of debates yeah, um, with people. Yeah. Um, some are a little surprised that somebody who doesn't fit the media narrative, you know, somebody who um, is black, you know, who is, you know, self-employed, you know, who um, is taken from the economy what he can get from it, you know, not that it's the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, um, would be a Trump supporter. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, I think it really does kind of tie back into, um, you know, the experience I've had as a black person in America. You know, I grew up in Washington, D.C., you know, during the 80s um, when Marion Barry was mayor. Um, there were a lot of, you know, it was the, the crack ep epidemic at the time, if you remember. Yes. Um, you know, back that far. And, you know, if you weren't, and I wasn't, if you weren't, you know, a very strong, you know, kind of, um, you know, eager to fight, um, you know, kind of guy, you know, you had to deal with people like that. And, and I wasn't like that. You know, I was, you know, very skinny. I was, you know, pretty smart. And I had to navigate, you know, that world. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't want to make it seem like I was like a character in New Jack City or something, right? Like, you know, there were lines of people, right. you know, I had crust on my lips like Pookie, you know, like it just wasn't like that. That's you know? funny. But what it was, was a, um, a constant, uh, almost daily or, or every other day um, confrontation of fear. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if somebody's on drugs or if somebody is uh, in a gang or, or something like that, you know, when you leave your house, things are unpredictable. Right. That's and right. if you don't have a strategy to deal with that, um, you know, especially if you are, you know, 6'3 and 145 pounds soaking wet, uh, <laughs> you know, you're going to be in trouble. So I had to develop, you know, strategies to to deal with that. And I mean, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that um, everything I did uh, during that time was something I would recommend my children do today. Right, right. Um, so you're sitting at home and it just dawned on you to write Donald Trump a letter? Are you a Republican? Donald Trump to me is a very honest man, um, uh, uh, intellectually honest. Even if he says something one day, and then he thinks about it more and he says, well, maybe I'll calibrate that a little differently tomorrow. Yes. Um, he really has been the most consistent uh, presidential candidate I've seen. Are you a Republican? Um, I am now, but I don't like the idea of being anything. And, and part of the reason for that, like I said, is because I grew up here. But I've been independent my whole life. Um, I voted for Obama in 2008. Um, I did not vote for him in 2012. Good for you. Well, okay, so I must admit it felt really good. It felt really good, and I think <laughs> that you might agree, it felt really good to see, you know, a black man get in the White House. Okay. <laughs> but then when you get past that, it's like, okay, dude, being the first black president is important. More important than that is the second and the third and the fourth you know, if you screw it up, especially in the way that you did, you know, yeah. being pat patently dishonest by so many things, um, then you kind of create this narrative because you're the first. You kind of create this narrative. Well, you know what? Yes, you know, diversity, this America, all that. But maybe, maybe to some people, we might not be um, trusted again. Yeah you know, with that kind of, 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 of power. So to me, he, um, he gives a good speech. You know, I wasn't like Chris Matthews. I didn't have anything running up my leg, but you know, I was moved. <laughs> you know, I took me and my wife and our family down to the mall in DC to, you know, watch his inauguration speech. Amazing. But then it's time to go to work. And you know what? He hadn't really done that before. He well, went into the Senate, didn't work. Yeah. Right? You know, voted. I mean, I guess voting is work, but when other people are putting all your materials together, 
and just handing it to you in a summary, if they read it at all, and say, here, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. There's, there's not enough um, intelligence, there's not enough work ethic going on um, in the Congress, uh, which is why they have to lie. They can't actually run on something they did or something they accomplished. And you can say whatever you want about Donald Trump, but just try to earn $10 billion. See how it works out for you. That's See right. What it takes. See what it takes to get to that level of success. In, in the real world. In your, in your letter to Trump, you write about how fear ruled you. Yes. Um, did you know about this prior to uh, Donald Trump? You knew about your fear? Look, I'm a, I'm a Leo, and I have a pretty healthy opinion of myself. I always have. And I, I always try to frame my um, weaknesses as really leading to other strengths. Like, yeah, I'm bad at this, but here's the upside. Like, I always try to, to do that with myself because I got to move forward. But at the end of the day, you know, when you uh, tabulate what happens in your life, you have successes and you have failures. And if you look at your failures and you figure out why you failed, if there's common threads, you know, you got to deal with it and you got to deal with it honestly. So, Troy, you knew about your, your fears prior to Donald Trump. Yes, yes. Um, I got picked on a lot, you know, when I was growing up and, um, you know, not just from the uh, people around me. Um, I, would, I was raised in a single parent household and, 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 and my mother was definitely somebody who I would characterize now um, as having a bullying nature at that time. So I really didn't have a place to be where I wasn't confronted with a lot of, um, you know, criticism and, and, and ridicule. And, um, you know, it, it just had an effect on me, you know, especially yeah. as a kid, you know, it just had an effect on me. And, you know, then as an adult, you know, the responsibility for raising yourself falls on you. Right. You know, uh, <laughs> so you, so growing up like this bad neighborhood and not having a father there and mother being out of control, you had no one to talk to or help you with this stuff. You just grew up with it. Yeah. And I had a little brother I had to take care of my mom because we uh, because, you know, we were just doing it ourselves. You know, there were times where she you know, had two jobs and she didn't come home till. 10, 11 o'clock at night. I had a key to my house from, I think, the time I was four years old. Wow. Um, so, I, so I was a latchkey kid. Describe um, your mother's personality. At that time? Yes. Because like, she's different now. But, right, you know, at that time. At, at that time, um, angry a lot. Um, you know, she was always searching. You know, she had multiple boyfriends that, that lived with us. Um but very, very smart, you know, did very well, you know, professionally. She worked for the Washington Post for a while um, and was always looked upon as, as a leader in those settings. But, you know, when she walked through the door, um, you know, if she was upset about something, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it started really with a lot of beatings. Like I remember, you know, hiding under, um, the mattress uh, when I was younger in our home because she couldn't lift it up. Wow. So, you know, under the bed, uh, you know, there was a mattress, there was a frame, and then there was underneath. Underneath the bed was kind of my safe space, if you want to call it that now. Because she would beat you at the time when she would come home from work. Well, I mean, at, at, at many times, at many times, like not just... Um, you know, only when she would come home from work. But honestly, whenever something happened that she didn't like, whether it was something I did or, you know, something somebody else did, you know, she didn't have a lot of self-control. Did she beat um, your brother too? Time. Well, my brother, mm, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's hard for me to say if it was as much or not. Um, I want to say that my brother had his dad. Oh, you um, did? Around. Well, yeah. I thought, I thought his dad was actually my dad until I was 14, and I found out that he wasn't. How did you find out? Uh, my mom filled out a form for school. 
and you know on it listed dad and there was this guy's name you know michael campbell i'd never heard of who that was so i thought that she just made a mistake you know i came back home and and i was like wait a minute you know you filled this form out wrong and she said you know i told you a long time ago that you know this was your dad and i knew that wasn't true wow but you know that changed things for me because i mean literally you can't think somebody's your dad without other family members around you agreeing with that right that's right so um, so how what at that what, point if, i didn't i didn't trust any of them i didn't trust any of them because they had all you know told me something that or led me to believe something or allowed me to believe something that they knew wasn't true um so how and, was that how did that impact you when she said that to you um that's when i started doing things on my own. There were, there were two moments um, in my childhood that really um, made me very independent and, 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 and not very trustworthy of, of people. Um, you know, one was when I was 10 years old, my mom got mad at me about something and she hit me in the face. Mm. It's the first time it didn't hurt. It did not. No, it didn't. And well, she, I, she hit me so hard, she, she sprained four fingers on her hand and had to wear these like plastic uh, casts on her hand for three weeks. And I was very, I was very proud of that. I was glad that, you know, she got hurt for wow. once. That's um, amazing, man. Yeah. And after that, I, 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 I only listened to her when I felt like I had to, but then this, but then when that happened, when, you know, I found out my dad wasn't my dad, um, then that's when I really kind of went my own way. And, um, you know, I started working, you know, when I was 14, I was making my own money. Like I, 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 I don't rely on anybody else. Um, but myself, um, after that moment. Wow. And so why did she treat you worse than she treated your brother? Younger, you know, she was 19 when she had me. Oh, I see. You know, and I mean, you know, you, you, I mean, look, I got kids, you know, I, I hope I'm better to, <laughs> You know, the second and the third one, and I am the first one, you know. Are you but married? Yeah, yeah, I'm married. And how are you, and you still have this fear, right? Fear is, I mean, look, everybody has fear, right? It's, 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 it's how much weight you give it when you make a decision about something. So how are you as a husband and father? Um, I think I'm a pretty good dad, um... I want to say that um, I had, the women I tend to be attracted to are ones that um, you know enjoy a lot of conflict. That's been a very big problem for me. Um, you know, very kind of like my mom. Yeah, you know so, why that is, right? You know, I, 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 in hindsight, I can look back and I can say, well. You know, I got into this relationship, you know, because at the time, you know, I was, you know, fearful of this or that thing. Um, but I got to tell you, you know, in the beginning, you know, when you meet people, you know, you, you, you definitely get their best face. And then after they get to know you for a while and, and, and you get to know them, you know, they react to the things about you that they don't like. And some people do that um, very aggressively and some don't. But you don't but, want you don't want to meet women like your mother, but you it seemed to just happen. Well, and they seem to be attracted to me. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I mean, look, do I I'm never one to shy away from a debate. I'm never one to shy away from a conflict. It's just something I've been dealing with my whole life. I'm I think I'm a nice person. There are other people who may disagree with that sometimes. Are you mean at times? Uh, well, I can be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the reason absolutely. that you were the reason you are attracted to these women uh, who who are like your mother is because whenever we have anger or resentment toward someone, we become attracted to what we hate. And so because you take on that person identity, your mother's spirit made a home in you by way of anger. And, and you're never going to get away from these type women until you can truly, truly forgive her for what she's done. Let me take a break and we'll come back and pick up on this.